Hey everybody, my name is Jeffrey Way. Welcome back to NetTouch. So today we're going to have some fun and we're going to build a notepad paper with CSS. So here's what our final product is. So we're building uh, the curled edges, that's all CSS, writing shadows, we're using custom handwriting font, and then we're also creating the actual notepad, you see those lines there, that's all just using background gradients, and we're going to learn how to use background sizing uh, with WebKit, and then with Mozilla we're going to learn about repeating gradients. So let's get into it. We always start with a blank slate. So I've created a page, I have a wrapping div with the class of page, and two paragraphs, and that's it. And then we're linking to our style sheet, and now we're all set to get started. So the first thing we want to do is just create our structure. So we're going to get that body, and we're going to give it a, a grayish background, and then just push it from the top just a little bit. Okay. Now for our actual page, and remember, this is the this will be our notepad. So within page, we will say uh, let's give it a width of around 700 pixels, and we're going to give it margins to auto to make sure that it's centered on the page. And for the time being, we're going to give it a background of white. So let's come back, and here is, I'm going to close this one out, and here is our current project. All right, that looks okay, but we need to do way more, don't we? So let's come in, and we should give it some padding, shouldn't we? So let's give it some padding of 25 pixels on the top and zero on the left and right. Now let's get that paragraph, and let's push that away as well. So we'll say P. And we'll just be generic here and we'll say, uh, let's give it a line height, or no line height for the time being, but let's give it on the left and right a lot of breathing room, maybe 100 pixels. Yeah, okay. So now, we first want to have something to work with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to images and I'm just going to look for paper and see if we can find something. Yeah, here we go. That's what we want. So now we're not going to use this specifically, we're just using it so we can have the colors. So I'll paste that in, and now I can zoom in, and I know roughly what colors for Notepad. So let's first grab that yellow and come back into our project, and we'll set that as the background color. So, okay, now we have our yellow, and now we also need to get our border color, and that's going to be this bluish color. So we can just look around here until we find proper blue that we want. Maybe this one right here. Okay, and now for the time being at the very top, I'll just say stripe and I'll paste that in that way we can come back to it when we need it okay so coming back to the page let's some, set some default colors uh, we're gonna set a, a color of 21 21 21 which isn't quite black it's a little less it'll look more like ink and now we need to make this look like actual paper right now it's a big square but we want to make it look kind of naturally like paper where some of the the edges might be a little folded or maybe curved and things like that well we know we have things like WebKit border radius and say five pixels and we know we can do that but that doesn't look any more like paper uh, it's it's identical what makes it look real is imperfection right so I'll show you something that you may not be familiar with uh, let's come back and let's this time let's say WebKit border radius and by the way in the latest versions of Chrome you can uh, just use border radius if you want anyhow so let's come back and say border bottom left radius now this is the same thing we're just being specific here and that only specifies the bottom left but watch what happens when we apply two values. So I could say uh, 50 pixels, 20 pixels. And that's going to uh, create a very different look, as you can see there. Now, what really becomes cool is when you set high values. So let's say uh, on the bottom left, we set it to uh, 20 pixels and maybe something like... 500 pixels. Now what you're going to see here is it's going to affect the entire layout so no longer do we have a fully straight line and then a little curl at the bottom. We have it where it slowly starts to curl. Okay, You can get a much more real looking look there. So with that in mind let's do a couple more. Let's do one for the, uh, we have bottom left, let's do bottom right and the key is to make these different. So for bottom right We'll do it the other way around. We'll say 500 pixels and 30 pixels. And you know what? There's no perfect value. It's mostly just going back and forth and playing with it to make it look kind of like curled edges and real paper. And uh, maybe we'll do one more. So we'll do one for maybe the top right. And for that one, we'll do it a little less extreme, maybe 5 pixels and 100 pixels. How about that? But yeah, if you're doing this on your own, just play around with it. Have some fun. And that just gives it just a little bit, and we'll keep the top left one straight. All right, so that's already looking a lot more like paper because it's not perfect. So we'll stick with WebKit for now, and then at the very end, we'll come back and compensate for all the other browser vendors. 
So now we need to go ahead, we've set our background color, but now we want to make it look like a notepad, right? So we'll do it here at the bottom and always set a default color when you're using gradients. That way for the browsers that don't support it, they will fall back to a single color. But now we're going to do a gradient for WebKit. So background is going to be WebKit gradient. And what I find is it's a little easier for me to read if I put this on its own line like so. So we begin by specifying the type. It's linear and the, where it's going to begin and where it ends. It's just going to go from top to bottom. And now we need to grab those colors. So we know we begin here, so let's go ahead and grab this color, and we'll say from, and then we can either say to, and we can also specify color stops. So in this case, we don't want it to go for the entire page. So if I did to red, and we took a look at how that looks in the browser, that's going to extend for the entire page. But we really just want small snippets, and then we want that to repeat over and over and over, right? So the way we can specify that is by doing a color stop and saying uh, we're going to go and do the stripe that we have, and I'll paste that in, and that's going to occur at, say, 2%. Now if I refresh, you can see that at 2% that's going to change. Now here's what makes this cool, is we can specify now exactly how tall that background should be. And the way we do that is with WebKit background size. And now we can do left, right, and top, and bottom. So we can say the width 100% and height and will be 40 pixels tall. So now if I refresh that, notice how that begins to repeat itself over and over. So obviously I mix these up and we want to switch these over. Let's paste that in, sorry about that. Yeah, but now look how easy that is, and that's the key is setting a background size. So if I were to set it to 200 pixels, you'll see that that gradient will repeat every 200 pixels, one and then another one, right? So let's keep it small, and we're gonna keep it around 40 pixels. There we go. Now, we wanna make sure that the line height lines up, because this text should be perfectly within each of these lines, so we need to play around with line height a tad. And let's begin by going into the P tag, and let's, you gotta play around with it a little bit, I did, and let's try setting it to around 40 pixels. So if I refresh, yeah, and that's getting better, but it looks like it's still not 100%. And if we come back into index.html, you can see the problem is when you create a new paragraph, the margins are pushing it over. So this all lines up nicely, but then there's some default margin on the P tag, and that needs to be set up. So let's come back and we'll go back to the style.css and now we'll say margin bottom for every paragraph and you might need to be more specific for your project. This is all we're doing here so I had the liberty of just directing all p tags. And let's set a margin bottom of around 40 pixels. Yeah, and I've already tested this out of course but it might take you a few tries but now everything's lining up nicely. Okay, better. Now I want to use some custom fonts. So uh, you could play around with it and you could say uh, we could do it within the page up here if you wanted to restrict it to this class and you could say cursive right but the thing is it just doesn't look that great we could refresh and it just looks like a crappy cursive font so i'm gonna use the google font directory to find something and i'm just gonna search for hand something like handwriting and i'll click on use this font and you can see it's just a matter of linking to this and then we can reference that font by writing just another hand is the name of the font all right, so let's go back into index.html and I'll paste that in. And now we'll use it. And we'll use cursive as a fallback. And then with cursive, any default cursive as a fallback. So with that alone, if I refresh, now we're getting this custom font. But the only thing is, and this is a sometimes hard to deal with is that every font is different. So in this case, the custom font we're using isn't the right size. So we need to go and specify font size and we'll give it around 30 pixels for the font size. And now it looks like we're pushing it down maybe a little too much. So we can go back to page and we can say padding on the top. Why don't we try bringing that down to around 15 pixels? Yeah, and now that's lining up nicely. Okay, so this itself is already looking good, but we can take it further. And we still have to compensate for Mozilla at the end. So I have this little bit of tape right here. Nothing, nothing fancy. We could probably even mimic that in CSS. But we want to use the tape. So I don't want to just put an image tag in there because it really serves no semantic purpose and I could apply it to the background here but we're already using a gradient and then secondly uh, not all browsers will support multiple backgrounds so better is to use a pseudo class so we'll do page before and here we'll set some values and we're just going to apply that tape as a background that way it will work so content will just be a space and we're gonna set the background equal to URL tape.ping 
and it should not repeat. And we gotta set a width and a height for it. See if I click on the image at the very bottom, it'll tell me the dimensions, it's 129 by 38. So let's insert that, because we have to have some values if we're not adding any text. And we're gonna set the position to absolute. And let me scroll down just a little bit. And now here's where we can specify exactly where it should go. So top and left. And let's just do that to begin with. And we're not gonna see anything just yet, and it's probably because we need to set a display of block. And nope, it's because I wrote tape. All right, let's refresh. All right, and now that's being positioned in reference to the window, and that's because we need to set a positioning context on the page itself. So we'll do position relative. And that way, it'll use page as its positioning context. All right, now it's in the top left corner. So at this point, you just need to measure it and put it where you want. So I wanna push it up a little bit, and then from the left, I don't know, maybe 46%. I don't know, doing this off the top of my head. Uh, maybe too much still, so maybe 40. Yeah, and now that's more or less centered on the page. I think that looks fine. All right, so now why don't we add some shadows behind our page just to give it more of a natural look. So we can do that right here. And remember, WebKit background size, Mozilla doesn't support this. So Mozilla uh, implements something different called repeating gradient. So we don't need to do all the vendor prefixes for that. So now here we're gonna do WebKit background, I'm sorry, WebKit box shadow. And we're gonna do zero, and we're gonna push the shadow down two pixels. We're gonna give it 10 pixels worth of blur. I'm gonna give it a spread of around one pixel, though it's not really necessary. And we're gonna make it uh, black, so that zero, 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 and the alpha is gonna be about 20%, so 20% black. And now, if you look, that just adds a very subtle glow underneath it. So here, of course, we need to do, compensate for the other browsers. There we go, and it's looking pretty good. So now at this point, we need to test it out in Firefox. So that's what we had originally, but let's go and see where our demo is. Okay, well, we need to implement the gradients for Firefox. All right, well, we need, need to do background. And remember how I noted that with Firefox or any Mozilla browser, we can't take advantage of this feature background size, which is really helpful. So we need a different way to specify what the height of our background gradient is. All right, so with that in mind, we'll do background. It's going to be Mo's, and this time, rather than linear gradient, which you're probably familiar with, when you want it to repeat, you use Mo's repeating linear gradient. Okay. Now here, we again specify it's gonna go from top to bottom, and now we just need to paste in the values, but unfortunately, it doesn't equally go over. So you'd hope that you could do something like this. And if we kept it like that, and we come back to Firefox, you're going to see you're not going to get what you want. So it doesn't transfer over perfectly. And the reason is because we don't get to use Ma's background size. So with that in mind, we have to be a little bit smarter. And here we need to play around with it just a little bit. So rather than using percentages specifically, we really can't use percentages because at this point with Mozilla, when you're not setting a background size, it'll be based upon the entire height of your content. And that would really affect it. So we'll use pixels instead. And we'll say 38 pixels. Now let's come back to Firefox. Okay, that's starting to look better, but we still, we don't want any actual gradients, ironically. So what you can do is we can do that technique where you do the same color. So let's do it like this. Let's paste this in, and we'll get this color around 38 pixels, and then we'll move to this color at 40 pixels. Okay, and really that's about as easy as it is. So uh, to be honest, this took me a little while to get these values because it doesn't transfer over easily. But why is this working? And it's because uh, we have our color and then we say, uh, once you get to 38 pixels, it needs to be this color. So if it's easier for you to get rid of these hex colors so you know exactly what's going on behind the scenes, at least helps me. If we do red green, you can see that the red will extend for 38 pixels. So we say start at red, and you need to be at red by 38 pixels. And then when you get to 40 pixels, it needs to be solid green. So that means it has two pixels to transition from uh, red to green, and that'll just give you more of a natural look actually. Now, if you're thinking, why can't we just get rid of this and say, go from red all the way up to 38 pixels, it doesn't work that way. And you can see that's kind of what happens there. Not really what you want. So you got to play around with it and tinker with it a little bit. So let's get rid of those colors and come back to Firefox. With that, we're done. Now we need to take care of Mozilla's rounded edges. Five and 100 pixels. So come back. And now we're getting those nice and turned corners. There's Firefox. 
there's Chrome. Uh, if you go into a different browser like IE, it's just going to be a solid yellow background, and that's okay too. So we've successfully made cool paper.